Jasper National Park is a stunning place that is part of the Canadian Rocky Mountains Park and is a UNESCO World Heritage Site renowned for its beauty. My dad and I spent 24 hours in the park and were blown away by the daunting vistas, staggering amount of wildlife, and some truly impressive hiking trails. Here's all the information on our time in Jasper National Park and be sure to stay to the end where we get to actually drive on a glacier. All right, let's jump into it. We grabbed a hotel in the town of Jasper and we set out early the next morning to go to Malign Lake. This is about an hour drive and it's one of the park's most popular destinations which is why we got the early start. Almost immediately we were rewarded with our first wildlife sighting of the day. He's walking out in front of the car. After hanging out on the side of the road for a little bit, we continued on and went past Medicine Lake. This is a great spot to stop if you have the time, but I would do it on the way back so you make sure you can get a parking spot at the end of the road. First stop of the day, we're heading out on the boat tour. There was only one ticket available, so Pops is just gonna wander around here while I go do this and then we're gonna connect for the rest of the day. We were there in the summer, which is obviously the busiest time to be in this park, so be sure to get your tickets in advance if you want to go out on the boat tour. The most booked tour is the one that heads out to Spirit Island and is about an hour and a half round trip. That's the one that I did and we cruised along the lake with our guide giving us lots of information on the geology, the history, and the park itself. I loved that you could sit in your seats or you could just go hang out on the back of the boat and take in the views. Of course, you know me, I was hanging out on the back of the boat the entire time just looking at all of the massive mountains around us. It was a little hazy from a fire, which was not ideal, but it was still a beautiful time to be at the park. After about 30 minutes of cruising, you get to a narrow section as you get closer to Spirit Island, which is definitely the most beautiful part. Here the mountains get even more stunning with glaciers and other things to see. When we docked at Spirit Island, we had 15 minutes to explore and take pictures before we had to get in the boat and head back. I wish I would have had a lot more time here as this is the place where one of the most iconic Jasper National Park photos was taken. The island is a spiritual place for the Stony Nakoda First Nations people and so you can't actually walk out to it, just observe it from afar. Even with the haze, this was well worth the boat trip and I was so excited to be able to see this iconic spot myself. Just like that, our 15 minutes is over, but it was well worth it. I do have to say, it's quite the operation here. Basically, as soon as we were loaded up and leaving, there was already another boat waiting for our spot. The ride back is about 30 minutes, so be sure to go outside on the boat's deck and take in some of the views and the fresh mountain air if it's not fire season when you're there. No one wants to hang out on the back of the boat with me, but we got glaciers, mountains. We made it back, that was an incredible tour, definitely do it. Now I gotta find Pops. We are here and we went all the way back to here. I found Pops, what'd you do? Well, while people are going on that boat, there is a cool hike that you can take uh, that kind of makes a circle and it's perfect for an older crowd too. So I enjoyed it. I actually saw a deer on the trail. Nice. So the trail I took was called the Mary Schaefer Loop. The whole trail is probably about two and a quarter miles. Very, very pleasant, beautiful, beautiful thing. But I was so excited about this, but I did not see a deer. Or I did not see a moose, but I did see a deer, which was cool. So if there's only a ticket for one of your group members, there's nice little hikes you can do here. Heading on to explore more of the park. Leaving here, we started the one hour drive back to Jasper and when we got to Medicine Lake, we took the opportunity to stop at a few of the lookouts. Medicine Lake is seven kilometers long and what's especially interesting about it is that there's a large system of underground drains that basically go into other lakes and rivers in the area. Because of that, it can be a lake certain times of the year and almost dry in other times of the year. When we went, the water level was pretty low, but it was beautiful to see. One of the places where the water flows out to is the river that runs through Malign Canyon, which was our next stop. Pops dropped me off and he's gonna go up to the fifth bridge and that's where he's gonna park and hike in and I'm hiking up to meet him. Spoiler alert, Malign Canyon is one of the best hikes I've done in a long time. 
This area is incredibly beautiful. Since we had limited time and Pop's knee was hurting him a little bit, he dropped me off at the beginning and drove down to the end where he was just gonna hike around a little bit down there and I was gonna meet him. If you go down to Bridge 5 where we ended the hike and back, it's about two and a half miles or four kilometers round trip. By far my favorite part of this hike was at bridge number one where there's a massive waterfall in the canyon below you. So I did no research before I came out here and apparently that was a good way to do it because I'm blown away and I've just gone to the second bridge, that's it. This canyon is one of the deepest in the Rocky Mountains and it's over 50 meters deep at certain points which is 165 feet. The hiking trail is perfectly made as you basically walk along the top of the canyon and crisscross bridges to get views down into it. It's another of the really popular trails in the park, so parking can be hard to find. Also, if you do it one way like we did, then you're actually going downhill all the way to Bridge 5. Be sure to give yourself a lot more time than I did for this trail. You could actually spend a half day just taking in all of the amazing views. Just past bridge number three, this trail just keeps getting better and better. As you pass bridge number three, the canyon actually opens up a lot more, so it doesn't have the narrow rocky sections that it had previously, but it still has some of the really big drops down to the water below. Another thing that struck me was just how beautiful the landscape is around here. The water has almost a turquoise color, the rocks and algae have a brownish hue, and then there's all of the green from the plants and the trees. Plus you even get some white when the water's rushing through the canyon. This is easily one of the best short trails I have done in a long time. Between bridge four and five, there's a beautiful cascading waterfall that's heading into the river because why wouldn't there be a beautiful cascading waterfall on a trail like this? There's our last and final bridge for this hike, bridge five. I thought I was gonna run into you up the trail. Uh, I went about a half a mile up when that pipe area started to go down real steeply. I yeah. thought, ah, I'll just turn around, so about a half a mile. Before we head to lunch, I really wanted Pops to see a part at the top of the trail. So we found a parking spot and I'm gonna show it to him. Oh my gosh, that's incredible. Look at that. I didn't that. a waterfall like that. No, into this massive canyon. That's I didn't want to warn you about it because I knew you wouldn't come out here if I told you you were going to be afraid of heights. <laughs> the heights are just, it's okay, but this is unbelievable. <laughs> Was it worth getting out of the absolutely, car for that? Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely worth it. My gosh, getting out of the car for that? Of course. Pops is no longer afraid of heights. He said he'll take that log across. Yeah, I'll, I'll be right back. <laughs> we just did the short loop down to Bridge 2 and back to the parking area. We all give Pops a like for actually standing here and looking over the bridge. I I'm did not expect him to do over it. The bridge. Look, I'm leaning. It's way higher than Arches National Park was. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> After leaving Maline Canyon, we headed back into the town of Jasper to get lunch at the Sunhouse Cafe. Here's another example of how healthy Pops and I are. Look at that. Salmon. Oh, just a, it's like pickled cabbage or something. Yep. Overall, the meal is good though. It's excellent, yeah. We were told the cheesecake is where it's at, but it was already sold out, so we got this cookie. It looks pretty strong. Josh was looking at it the whole time we were eating, just desiring it. I was. Finally broke down a bottle. Break that in half so I can give it a try. Quit holding out on me. That's the way a cookie should be. It's very good, very soft. I can't imagine how good the cheesecake is with how good this cookie is. <laughs> Heading on to some more adventures. For our second half of the day, we decided to drive on the Icefields Parkway to see that part of Jasper. We have an entire video on the Icefields Parkway that you can see in the description, but for this video, we just set out to see some of the main stops. Nothing like a good rainy hike to a waterfall. At least a short rainy hike. <laughs> I can't remember the last time I hiked with an umbrella. Hopefully this isn't how our glacier tour is. <laughs> This spot was about 30 minutes south of Jasper and it's Athabasca Falls, one of the most visited spots along the parkway. You're basically the only one at the viewpoint. At the moment, yeah. Look at this powerful flow. It's unbelievable. 
When I saw pictures of it online, I didn't think it was going to be that impressive since it's only 75 feet tall and we have massive waterfalls in California. I could not have been more wrong though, and this is a spectacular waterfall. That was a crazy impressive waterfall. The amount of water that was flowing over there was just unimaginable. It was like a magnitude I haven't seen outside of Niagara Falls. That was definitely a cool spot. And, and so easy to get to, real quick stop, but beautiful, incredibly powerful, wow. From here, we drove south for about an hour to get to our last stop of the day. The Icefields Parkway is something I've wanted to do for a long time, and you'll see a lot more of it on our specific video, but I have to say that it lived up to expectations. The views on this drive are pretty much unmatched. Pops and I are pretty tired, but we have one more stop today, and that's taking a car out to a glacier. Should be pretty cool. And by car, this is the car we're taking. <laughs> I mean, this is more of an all-terrain vehicle than it is a car, and it looks like the perfect thing you'd want to drive for an adventure on a glacier. If you're doing this, note that there are no bathrooms once you leave, and it can take two to two and a half hours. This is definitely the main tourist attraction to do in Jasper. Should be fun though. A few of my friends had told me this was a fun experience, so we decided to do it. It does cost around $115 a person though taking a bus to connect with our transfer to take us up to the glacier. The tour we did included both going onto the glacier and then also going over to the skywalk. These all-terrain ice explorers are epic. They said there's 24 of them in the world with 23 of them being here and one in Antarctica. Currently on the safest unpaved, commercially used road in North America, 33% green. I've been on <laughs> it's actually funny how slow this thing goes as you make your way towards the glacier. I bet we were going like five to six miles per hour for most of the grade. Pops, we're driving on a glacier right now. <laughs> After about 20 minutes, we finally arrived to the part of the glacier that we were going to be exploring. They let everybody out and then you could walk around the glacier, drink water, do whatever you wanted for about 20 minutes. And you gave away your pole. I know, that lady was more unstable than me. There are a few people that are more unstable than me, believe that or not. <laughs> this is the third glacier we've been on in our Alaska trip. Our Alaska trip, yeah. This is beautiful. So different than the other one. I was actually surprised that they didn't provide any type of crampons or anything, as it was pretty slippery to walk around and I definitely took my time. That being said, I didn't really see anybody fall on the ice, but I did see people moving very slowly and shuffling along. Oh. <laughs> I'm stepping over the line. That's I, thought you were, I thought you were gonna fall in. Ooh, that is really cold. Okay. <laughs> Who'd have thought? I'm like Pops, I actually know that glacial water is cold. How do you beat that? It's fresh, it's crisp. This is a very cool experience, really accessible way to get on a glacier if you want to get on one. You can also see all the other glaciers we climbed in the description linking other videos we've done on this trip. Also now I think I've completed the trifecta. I've landed on a glacier, I've walked on it, and now I've driven on it. Most of the glacier is roped off, so there's only a small section that you can explore. You're pretty high up on the toe of the glacier though, so the views around you are really great. There's more glaciers that you can see, there's waterfalls, you can watch the all-terrain vehicle coming down the hill. Overall, it's just a very unique experience that you wouldn't expect to have. After exploring for about 15 minutes, we headed back to the vehicle. Our time on the ice is done, but we have one more thing that's included with this ticket that we're gonna do before ending the video. I don't know about you, but aren't these vehicles just cool? I couldn't get enough of watching them drive. This will give you an idea of the scale of the size of these wheels. It's at one and a half meters. As you remember, Pops is 6'7". After getting dropped off from the ice explorer, it was back on another bus to take us the 15 minutes to the skywalk. The Skywalk is one of the newest attractions, and these types of things are super popular. There's one in the Grand Canyon as well. 
All right, last stop of the day before we head back to Jasper, we're going on the skywalk. And by we, I mean me. If you watch these videos, you know Pops isn't going anywhere near that. He was terrified just walking up to see it from afar. Please watch your step while you're on the skywalk. <laughs> All right, here we go. Let me know in the comments if this terrifies you like Pops or if you would do it as well. This skywalk platform is suspended out on the edge of the cliff and there's glass panels that you walk on that allow you to see down into the valley below. I was actually surprised by how high up I was and it was 918 feet or 280 meters down to the river below. From here, you can see waterfalls in one direction and glaciers in the other. Saying goodbye to the skywalk, honestly, that was pretty cool. The views out here are ridiculous, even with the wildfires. And with that, our time in Jasper National Park is done. Click over here to watch tomorrow's video where we're gonna drive the Icefields Parkway to Banff. Also, give Pop some props. He got, he got pretty close out there. You see where I'm standing now. Yeah, as he holds onto the edge. All right, we'll see you on the next one. On the hour and a half drive back to Jasper, we got to see some more animals and a beautiful sunset. This park's amazing. All right, we'll see you on the next one.